I'm going to call the meeting to order. If everyone could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. And if I could have Griffin lead. Sure. Thank you, Griffin. Appreciate it. Okay, moving forward, uh, we'll move on to adopting the agenda. Can I get a motion? Madam President. Griffin. I move that tonight's agenda be adopted as printed and placed on file. Is there support? Support. Thanks, Dee. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda. Is there any board member who would like a consent agenda item to be removed and acted on separately? <coughs> Seeing none, can I get a motion for the consent agenda? Madam President. Griffin. I move that the Board of Education approve the consent agenda items as presented. Is there support? Support. I heard Arlene. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you. We've reached our first public commentary, and this commentary is for agenda items only. Any public commentary? All right. Seeing no one heading towards the mic, we'll move on to board correspondence. Griffin? Uh, we have a few items to report this month. We have um, one email about the choir and theater department vacancy from a parent. We have another um, about stadium upgrades, questions about that. And one that was just sent to me about someone from a college asking about college visits. And I referred to, to Mr. Weber. And we received three emails about the Carry the Cure Assembly. And that's it. Okay, thank you, Griffin. We'll move on to the Board of Education reports. Uh, Griffin, anything from the Park Board? Uh, not much is going on. They're getting ready for winter time. Okay. Sorry, Carl. Was there anything from the Township Government that you would like to talk about? No, just that I have a call out to the Township in regards to um, the proposed sidewalk that we discussed at the last community, Committee of the Whole, as well as um, I also have a call in regarding potential partnership on radar signs for uh, our elementary buildings. Okay, thank you. And Legislative Relations Network, Amy? Uh, I don't have a ton to report. Um, I will say that last week uh, go the governor appointed, um, announced her appointments to the School Safety and Mental Health Commission, which was created in the fiscal year 22-23 school aid budget. That commission will provide recommendations to reduce to reduce youth suicides and strengthen the mental health of children. She also announced appointees to her first ever Michigan's Parent Council, for Michigan's Parent Council, which allows for parents' voices to be involved in the policy-making process. Um, and there's a full press release and and um, details of you know who all of the appointees are, but I won't go through all that now. Okay, thank you, Amy. Moving on to Michigan Association of School Boards, Megan. Yeah, yeah. nothing to report. <laughs> thank you. Okay, policy committee, uh, we have a first reading tonight, so we'll hear about that a little bit later on the agenda. Dee, anything else? Moving on to the Monroe County Association of Board of Education. Griffin? Uh, nothing to report. Thank you. Okay, we'll move into our superintendent's report. And Carl, it looks like you have a couple of items today. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam President. Um, the first item this evening is, 
make sure I know the right order. Um, a presentation on the uh, stadium design work that we have been going through. And tonight we are being joined by Mr. Dave Serra with the Collaborative Group that is our lead uh, design and architect on the project. Um, I'm going to have him join us here. Dave, would you like to introduce yourself? I just sure. talk a little about the process and, and how we uh, how we've come up with you know where we're at today. Sure. Uh, good evening. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm Dave Sarah. I'm one of the partners with the collaborative. Um, we're an architecture firm, offices in Ann Arbor and Toledo. Um, so I think we started this process primarily with Tom and Carl um, in the summertime. Um, you know, started to have some design meetings. Started uh, got some initial information from Tom about some initial thoughts and concepts. That I think we're being discussed. So we've been working over the past number of months to try to refine those, and um, you know, going back and forth with design ideas, trading design thoughts, um, trying to capture all of the uh, kind of things you're trying to accomplish out at the football stadium. So I think we feel pretty good about where we are. Um, we'll kind of walk you through two different uh, schemes tonight. One that we're calling um, the the base kind of base bid design concept, and then we've got some alternates. Um, then we want to talk a little bit about the budget and then schedule kind of moving forward from tonight and uh, when we could be anticipating going out to bid and starting construction. Thank you. So with that. So this is um, what we're calling just our kind of base bid um, project scope as we you know, are showing it today. You'll see this is kind of a, a bird's eye view of your new uh, turf facility that you, you just got put in here. Um, but we're talking about um, really right at the front of the stadium, putting in the larger uh, box would be a, a new concession stand area. So that's that larger kind of box in the lower left-hand corner. There'd be uh, ticketing, there'd be concessions, there'd be storage for concessions in there. Um, around the perimeter of the, the football field, you'd have a number of kind of masonry piers that kind of march down um, along the drive there and then head back to where your old concession stands were. That would have ornamental fencing um, in between there. I know there's some donor opportunities and things like that. Um, and then uh, kind of creating a plaza kind of in front of the new concession stand. And then once you get inside the stadium, creating another kind of plaza area that will allow for people to stack um, at the concession area. So we've got three large um, kind of uh, areas there for the concession stand. So, you know, you could probably get two or three lines at each one of those um, for people to walk up and order concessions. Starting to show some ideas of some seating opportunities kind of right directly in front of the concession area and then maybe off to the left, closer to where your old concession were, which those are going to be turned into new restrooms. Um, have talked about the idea there in front of the of the tables. There's a new wall there that we would create that would separate um, kind of that traffic from the concession to the football field. So that would be partial height wall that someone can lean on, um, but still provide um, some blockade there between the concession and the in the track football area. And then we've moved the bell. So if you could kind of see off uh, closer down to where the bleachers are, we kind of uh, shifted that bell from where it is today down to a new location. So that's that view. This is more of a view of getting closer to as you would enter, enter into the, the football complex. There'd be gates on both sides of the concession stand, um, large double gates that could open. Um, there's ticketing on both sides of that for home and um, away potentially. Um, to the left of the concession stand, you'll see there's kind of a large tower that's envisioned to have like a light in it to to be able to glow at night and give people like a wayfinding way if they're coming into the parking lot, um, give them a uh, kind of a, a point to go to to enter into the building. And then you see the, the old uh, concession area kind of off to the top, that'll become a new restroom. And then across the field would be the other concession stand that was gonna be converted into uh, restroom facilities as well. So more of an eye level view um, and then the wording, I, I think we're still kind of going through what the actual wording is. We know we want to have, um, you know, something um, of a welcome statement, starting to talk about some branding on the front of the building. Um, the building would be like a masonry. We've got some samples 
back um, behind all the seats of some various colors of uh, grays that we're looking at for the new masonry that would be on the concession stand and on the brick piers. And then I think the idea would be to paint some of the existing uh, buildings that you have out there to match. So this is a view if you're kind of above the football stadium, kind of looking back. Um, you see the old concessions stand there. We're creating um, a ramp. So for ADA access, right in front of the, uh, the, the old restrooms, there'll be a new ramp that goes in to allow anybody that's got um, any kind of needs to, to come up there to be able to enter into the restrooms with the doors kind of at the top of the landing. And then we've created some larger stairs that should allow, you know, as people leave the football stadium, plenty of access um, to go down those steps and then egress out the entry gates over to the parking lot area. This would be a shot looking, um, you know, from the drive looking, you know, dead on into the uh, football field. So you can kind of see the piers. That would be ornamental fencing that we um, have in between the piers. And then this is another kind of branding opportunity that we're showing with some uh, raised red, probably aluminum lettering um, that would go onto, um, onto that fencing area. And then just an overhead view of all of the things we've been talking about with the football field and then the new concession and some of the other things that would be um, kind of tied in with it. Board, would you like to talk about this? This is the really the base, as we talked about, as Dave mentioned. This is the kind of the base bit. If you remember how we did the a lot of the bond work, we would set out this is our, our base so that everyone bids on the on the base proposal and then there are either additions or subtractions reductions if you want to, depending on how you put the bid package out, um, which includes some different uh, materials, different different uh, additions. Do you want to talk about this first, or did you want to go and, and see all the, the other option as well? I think I, I, I'm, I'm moving ahead somewhere yeah. around 23. Is that 1.4? Is that the, the space bid? That is the base bid. Okay. So I think that's, I, I, I would like to, this is the base bid. It's 1.4, and then the next one, let's look at the next one and yeah. talk. So the $1.4 million estimate based on current projects that have gone out through Collaborative and, and also some of our them doing industry work to kind of figure out where the bids are because, uh, as you know, the bids of inflation and um, both worker as well as material shortages have driven some prices up. So the initial estimate was somewhere between 1.2, 1.4. This would come in hoping right around the 1.4, you know, that's our best estimate right now. So that would fit really within the original budget we have. If we want to look at some of the additions that would add to that um, as a potential alternate, uh, Dave, you want to go? Do you want me to carry on? Sure. No, this is, <laughs> this alternate looked at if you didn't use um, like a split face CMU like you have out there and maybe uh, going to more of a brick. So you'll see in the colors can be kind of whatever we wanted it to be, but this shows brick piers, brick concession stand. This starts to introduce maybe a larger brick wall that's kind of right at the um, end zone area there that I think we've got another close up shot. So um, that could be maybe more of um, a branding opportunity. Um, this option get your peers a little bit closer to than, than the previous one. So there's that, that brick wall in between the peers that if that was a solid Masonry, and that could be the the brick, uh, the split face CMU that we've got behind you as well. So I think in either option, if that was something the board preferred, um, or if that's uh, something we want to get an alternate price on, I think that's a pretty easy thing to do. If if that's an important piece, we could, you know, have the base bid, the fencing, and then in this area, having uh, an alternate design to get an alternate price to to do this area out of masonry. It, sorry, I just wanted to point the board back to. The page, here are my page numbers going. Uh, ten, ten has the other look of not having that masonry end, and it's just the so brick versus block. It is, but when you f see the price on the brick, you're going to know why we're, we like this better. <laughs> you can get close enough to see it. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, yeah. so. I have a question. How high is this? The, How the high fence? is the fence? Uh, I think it's about a 12-foot tall fence. Oh, the good. Okay. Are about I, I just envision 
people. No, jump yeah, over. yeah, we want it to be tall enough that people aren't. This, this is an ornamental fence also, so it's not like a chain link fence where you can stick your hands and feet and climb. These okay. are like a straight balusters. So Have you, you seen these guys? They climb over anything. Yeah, <laughs> Do, it, is there an option for uh, for if I'm on this one to do the split? What do you guys call that? This brick over yeah. here, um, with it being just a little bit less than the the real brick. Sure. Could, I mean, I I personally was interested in seeing that so that you have at least something behind those letters. Sure. Um, I like it both ways, but I I know the brick for me is a a is just a cost right yeah. now that I think is is prohibitive. So if we could see, and I don't mind the pillar. So the other thing they're talking about is the pillar spread. I think we don't have pillars now. So if we have less than we have, more than we have now, we're winning. Uh, but if we could just see what that would be in yeah. terms of a cost for that. That sure. was the one thing I know I looked at. That would be our ready grade too, So we have to, since this is our formal board meeting, we're going to, I so the how meetings we can will respond, but during formal board meetings we'll wait to um, public commentary. I'll write it down. Good job. <laughs> um, but yeah, so are there other items that that the board? I mean, I know you guys had this presentation ahead of time. Are there other items that the board would like to have discussed? I'm not. I'm not seeing numbers associated with yeah the brick and stuff so it's about a three hundred thousand dollar difference so when we price this um originally is the brick it was closer to about 1.7 million so that's when um you know we priced it both ways with the brick and then with the split face cmu so that's the delta is about a three hundred thousand dollar delta the and the idea is, oh sorry dave the idea would be to try to, the high school and junior high both being in front of the stadium they're not the exact same brick, so we were, we were looking at something kind of neutral between the two of them, a lighter brick. Um, I don't know that we could match, you know, having done brick work around the windows, we did try to match the brick the best we could. It, we wouldn't match perfectly, but, uh, the, but the cost was, when it came in at 1.7, and that's, you know, that was a, a solid estimate. You know, the, the, the spreading out of the pillar, so reducing that, that piece, um, one concern I would have even engineered correctly is the the current curved wall we have now is split face and it's a singular wall there's not a lot of protection for that wall so the the it's going to get hit by all the elements and the top three layers right now are crumbling so it's one of the reasons why that has to come down the top three layers are not salvageable so it'd have to be taken down remortared re, you know replaced i would i don't know if that'll happen in 20 years from now um, if we had just a wall out there with no type of roof out it, you know, I know we have the pillars, but the pillars are much smaller to replace than a, a full-size wall. So that was a concern that I had as well. And what would be the longevity of the brick wall versus the decorative fencing? I think it's, it, it, it'd be similar. Yeah. I mean, they're, again, the, 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 the smaller amount of masonry, the less chance you have of getting water infiltration and then freeze thaw and things like that over the years. So... Um, that's what would cause some of the issues I think you have today is just some of that moisture getting into that brick wall over the time. So I just, sorry, and again, I'm, this is a board meeting and not a cow meeting, so this is my bad because I started the discussion. Can we move, just go on to the schedule? We'll sure. get a motion on the floor and then we'll have the board members ask questions. So sure. I just want to maintain our there's parliamentary. There's, there's no vote for this evening. This is just a presentation. Oh, sorry. I was okay. Talking. But yeah, we can we can let we still we still have to put a do we still have to put a motion on the floor? Oh, we don't. Okay, sorry. So this would be our yeah. So go ahead if you want to do the schedule. Sure. Then we'll go back to questions. So this is our proposed schedule. So we're about a month um, away. We wanted to get feedback here tonight from everybody, and then we've got about another month where we want to finish all the drawings. Um, so around early November. We would, um, you know, be done with our construction drawings. We would send those out then for um, advertise for for uh, bidding. We'd submit those for building permits at the same time. Normally, you, you've got about four or five weeks for a bidding period, so we'd uh, get bids back around um, right before Christmas, and then look to award the project in early January. Um, 
Not sure there's a ton of long lead items, but the more lead time that we can give a contractor, the better, just with material deliveries and all that. So that was a thought of trying to get out as early as we can. People are looking for work next year, so this is like perfect timing to get out to uh, bid at this time so that people can um, get some work on their backlog for next year. And, you know, we have an April 1st groundbreaking, but I would think we'd leave that up to the contractor to whenever the weather allowed them, if that's late March or early April. Um, and then really try to get all this done before football, for, before the first football game would be the idea. So, it, and I'll entertain questions too if, if board members have on. Go ahead. How would this affect um, spring use of the stadium? That's Carl's question. Okay. Yeah, I mean, anything that we just like, just like with the bond, anything we can do to front load any work take the pressure off that very brief summer window we have we would try to do that we I mean we have we have our track season and we have lacrosse that use the field so we're not going to make it so that we cannot use the stadium but if we can do some preparatory work we will you know we'll try to get that in because and every project we get done or even started a little earlier will you know will help us ensure that we complete it on time other questions Just, um, you know, the, the key for this, and I've showed this now to our athletic director, our high school principal, um, just shared it with, uh, you know, we've been working with some other industry partners. We still have some favors from uh, some of our bond teams, just asking, you know, different, di additional questions. I've taken a look with Tom and Mark Garman, uh, dozens and dozens of other stadiums now you know, to see where it match up. I think this is not this is not the um, Taj Mahal course, but it is a significant upgrade over the facilities that we currently have. Um, you know, the use of the current existing buildings has helped bring the cost down. One thing we didn't highlight was the because um, there's not a lot in this budget because we would doing we'd be doing a little bit of it in house, most of it in house with Kevin Vogel and the and the students um, in our vocational program. The the third concession stand, which is at the west side of the bleachers, uh, it's a smaller concession stand that will actually be converted in, um, it'll be divided into two and we'll convert that. One side would be a training room for the, the medical trainer and uh, for the kids to use. So if they're getting taped, they, if they get concussed, if they get, if they, you know, if they have a place so they're not being reviewed right there on the field in front of thousands of people. Um, also on the other side would be a referee room very simple, just a spot for the refs to come and under, you know, change, um, lock their stuff up, and you know, have a place to go. Because right now they don't, they have to go back to their vehicles. And I can tell you, much like the teacher shortage and all the employee shortages we have, finding referees today is impossible. There's not enough of them, um, and they're being very selective on the on the on the um, games that they do want to do. We offer them Chick Fil A sandwiches, which helps, I think. But uh, <laughs> it will go a long way, giving them an actual place to sit and. And have you know have a place? Refs aren't always the most popular people in the stadium, right? So getting them into a location where they can decompress for the, the 15 minutes might help uh, as they're as they're doing events. So um, that that's not there's not a lot of the only expense in the budget for that particular piece is the um, is the exterior of the building to um, repaint, reside. Uh, the interior will be done by our, our work group. It's it's again it's just going to be a you know, pretty open building, you know, just divided by in half. You said they need to add another door and fill in the windows there. Um, in the back, you can see there's a beautiful field house that if anyone's watching and would like to um, donate to, I, I could see this being a wonderful addition uh, at a later phase. That would be like team rooms. Um, that is not included in this phase. That is probably about a $2 million endeavor. Um, but, it would offer, but it would offer rental space for teams um, community teams that already are renting space outside. It would give us team rooms for the kids because right now, on nice days, they, they stay kind of off to the um, bio storage garage. garage. Uh, on, on bad days, they, will, they go back to the auto shop and that's their team room. So it, it's functional. Um, most districts have team rooms already in place, but they, you know, many of them had to do it in phases. So you know, after we finish this and complete this, uh, then we can look at that. You know, as long as as well as our other projects, but uh, I mean, at the end of the day, this would be a significant upgrade. And I, I know initially we had the the brick as the base, you know, um, trying to match. But as we showed it to people, and as we continue, as I continue to look at it, I like 
I like the split face, especially if we can get it in the gray. And I know Dave, you brought some samples for us. We can get it in in a gray that really matches, so we're not having to maintain it and paint it. You know, we can, you know if we can get the uh, mortar to be the same color. I I really think, especially if we if we mix in, you know, one or two rows of the smaller piece, I think this would really stand off and look and match the other buildings and facilities we have on the exterior of the high school and junior high. So. Um, I, I think this is a, a really nice compromise, and we're getting, you know, the community would get something that we just haven't ever seen. As a reminder, that board we we've brought, we have commitments over a 10-year period of over um, 1.3 million dollars. So um, I think 1.32 is the current number that we have. Uh, you know, we talked about the board um, fronting the funds up front, and then over 10 years we will be paid back in. In total, the pro some of the proceeds from from gates or other projects that we we do have can I think make up that additional eighty thousand dollars if that is the final price, and uh, you know it stays pretty close within budget to where we started. And having met with the large donors and naming rights um, individuals, and to, to go over this with them because it's important. So if Forest View is going to have the family plaza, which they've committed to, this whole area, the for the Forest View Plaza. We need to make sure that they're they're good with it. They, they like it, and, they, and Rich Kenny loves it. And you know, we'll do some signage for the Forest View Family Plaza, um, the the Bates family and Heitman Steel, um, coming from the Bates Foundation, five hundred thousand uh, dollar donation over the course of ten years. Um, they they we had met with the family this week. They they loved it as well, and so uh, I, I think we're I think I think everybody's really in favor of this particular look as the base. Uh, unless there is somebody that really has to see the brick, I, I don't even know if we have to even add that as an alternate, make the bit even cleaner, mm -hmm. <clears throat> from my perspective. Yeah, I think I'm seeing agreement. No? Yes. No, okay. Yeah. Yes. We, I mean, if you want to, if we'd like to add the full brick wall as an alternate, we could, we could do that. And with the split face? With, right, well, with the split face. Yeah. yeah. If you wanted to add more pillars, I don't know that that's necessary. Being that it's a it's already a sturdy decorative fence, I, I don't, you know, we didn't add a we didn't add a turnstile to it like we, like we have right now. The idea would be we would lock the two gates. So the way that it's designed on the right side of the building would be the visitor. Um, the ticket booth is tucked inside here. The visitors would enter here and then they would go to the visiting side. And there's a gate down here that they would exit out at the end of the at the end of the game. And then the home team and the visitors would enter on the left. Um, you know, of course, then they, and, and exit the same path. Um, but during off days, it is community stadium. We would leave this gate here open, not have a turnstile in there. When they put the turnstile in, they just stop people from riding through it with bicycles and things like that. Um, we didn't have any cameras out there. We have a state-of-the-art camera system that covers this area. So I think I would be very comfortable not turning, not having the turnstile and having that open for the community. Tom, did you want to add anything? No. Okay. And all the build, all the exterior buildings will be painted the same color gray. Um, the they're working on this state, the softball stadium today. They've been working on it. Um, identified the paint color, so the softball and baseball back backboard or the um, back of the diamonds, the um, over by the tennis court, and the outbuildings will be painted the same color. Very consistent using the district brand and, and color scheme. I, okay. I don't need any votes tonight, uh, but I did want to get I did want to get the board's opinion, and um, if we're good to go, and there's no other questions, we can have the collaborative group work on the package and meet our timeline. Yep. Yeah, I think we said no to the brick, but maybe as an alternate to have the split face on the one end. Sure. Yep. Not a problem. All right. Thank awesome. you, Dave. Thank you. Thank nice you very job. much. Thank, Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, we'll move on to the uh, strategic five-year plan. Yes. I'm sorry. It's not
I just shared it with the board so that you can see it up close. You, you may have to refresh to in order to um, access it. Dr. French, I'm going to allow you to lead us through this. The honor of the mouse. Thank the you. Mouse is yours. <laughs> is it just the, the wheel? It is just the wheel. wheel. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Thank you um, for this chance to, to show you the summary of our strategic planning um, for the next five years. We had a strategic planning um, process 2015-2020. Then we know something called COVID happened and we were dealing with some things for a couple of years, but, but it was an opportunity last year to reconvene or convene a group of stakeholders um, both from within the district and from the community and parents and really um, refresh our strategic planning process. In the meantime, the, the state has updated its continuous improvement process uh, and it really behooves the district to make that one process, not to have two different plans, but really have a unified plan as a continuous improvement process. So that was the intention behind this as well. So um, we had our, uh, Carl and I have worked with um, Mrs. Sarah Shriver quite a bit. Um, she's a leader in our state. She's been a superintendent. She still uh, is the executive director of our state and federal programs um, organization in the state. So we work closely with her. And she was a great facilitator for our process and uh, just helped this group of fine people from our community come together around this. So, so in any process like this, you always want to refresh the district vision and mission. And um, our educating for life was really sitting before as the mission, but, but the group felt strongly that it fit better as the vision of the district. So they wanted to retain it and move it over to the vision side. The vision is, is a becoming statement. What do we want to become? As we, as we grow and move forward as a district. And then the group spent a significant amount of work in the, in the first few meetings looking at the mission and updating that. So um, quite a bit of input from the group about this language that you see here. So, so they settled on all learners will be prepared for lifelong success through high quality instruction, diverse experiences, a supportive environment, and strong community engagement. So that's, that's our everyday work. What do we want to do every day to actually become that place that educates for life? And then uh, <clears throat> this was a great discussion we also had. Um, our schools in varying degrees in years past have used the pillars of character or character counts. And uh, I had seen a district uh, adopt the same name, actually, uh, Universal Values of Integrity. So the, the, the group of stakeholders felt very strongly about um, the importance of character. The district I worked in that had universal values of integrity had done a great job of deliberately emphasizing those in their buildings, and it really made a difference. So you can see them there, respect, responsibility, citizenship, trustworthiness, fairness, and caring. All the principals have taken this on as well. Um, from this process and how, how can we make this really put into the forefront and emphasized in all of our buildings in various ways. And then we got down to the goals, refreshing our goal areas for the next five years so that we settled on four areas, improving student achievement, finance, facilities and resources management, and community engagement and strategic partnerships. And just to give you a little bit of, of the finer detail of those or how it would look within the continuous improvement planning uh, system. Um, so we want students, of course, to increase their achievement. We want to look at multiple measures, not just the straight achievement data, but also pertinent measures like graduation rate, attendance rate, all those things that, that we get data on. And uh, this is just an example of a stretch goal, you know, so after the five years by the spring of 2027 and taking where student achievement is now, um, we'd love to be at this aggregate measure 
and that's putting everything together you know, on, on these different big measures that we look at. So just an example of a stretch goal over the course of the strategic plan. There's also activities underneath the goals. So, so in this particular goal, um, we have set about becoming, we already are, but always becoming a better professional learning community, which sets up um, regular times for teachers to collaborate around student achievement. And especially, this is the number one research-based um, way that a school can improve, having a guaranteed and viable curriculum. So, so building that, as well as systems of intervention, if kids are struggling to attain the curriculum, how do we support them with time during the day? And also, if students already have it, how do we support them to move forward into deeper learning? Going with that, how will you know if they're attaining the curriculum? Well, you need a, a balanced system of assessment, formative assessments, that kind of, the kind of assessments that teachers or teams of teachers do daily or regularly in the classroom. And then more infrequent assessments to get a, to get a sense of how they're doing in the curriculum. And then how can, we're inundated with data, so how can, how can teachers really keep the focus on the most important data and use that effectively to inform the professional learning community process. The finance goal, ensure that we're in a positive financial status. Um, I think we've certainly, as we've seen, seen some great improvement over the last few years, and we want to maintain that, uh, those measures. So a minimum of 1.5% of the general fund expenditures reserved for capital maintenance annually, and then a minimum of a 10% fund balance annually, keeping us healthy. And then what are some activities that we do on an annual basis to support that? Well, we have annual meetings to review and adjust all the budgets. Um, Julie Campbell presents our annual audit results and that's posted for the community. And then giving the community an update on those measures so they can see where we're at. Facilities and resource management goal. So developing that comprehensive system of replacement improvement for all the areas of the district. That was a right, Madam President, a, a long-term desire of, uh, of the district to have that end of life sheet all in one place. That's something that, that we have done and we're constantly reviewing. Something I do is, is with the principal learning team that I work with, we always are looking at instructional needs and how we can refresh those with resources. And then finally, the community engagement and strategic partnerships goal. So, so we have wonderful community partners. The, the group that was working on this goal with me felt like how can we be more deliberate about that? How can we, how can we um, continue and appreciate the partnerships that we already have, but how, how can we also build those? So you'll see some, some ways that we want to venture to do that. So developing a master list of our community partners. Um, where are their gaps? We want to support our students and our staff and our families uh, in many ways. So where are gaps that we see? where we could fill in and then reach out to partners that maybe we don't have already. And then just continually keep that cycle of communication going and celebrating our partnerships. How can we deliberately celebrate and, uh, and highlight our partnerships in the community? So that's, that's an overview for the board and uh, just really excited about the work that the strategic planning group did together to get here. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Can I get a motion for the consideration to approve the strategic five-year plan? Madam President. Arlene. I move that the Board of Education approve the strategic five-year plan as recommended. Is there support? Support. Thanks, Amy. 
Any discussion on the strategic plan? Go ahead, Greg. I would just like to mention that this whole process started about a year ago, and we had, like we were just saying over here, it's not just one or two or three people figuring this out. We had parents, we had teachers, we had principals, we had everyone that you could possibly imagine involved in this. So it's not just like Dr. French and Dr. Schultz and, and the board just doing it. We had everyone involved, everyone was had different um, responsibilities different committees that we had going. So we had a lot of good discussion and multiple points of view on, on all the topics. So I think we have a, a solid plan put together here. Other comments from the board? I'll just say that I, even though she'll never hear me say this in this forum, I'd like to recognize Sarah Shriver for leading us through the process. She was really, really helpful. and. Um, I was pleased with so much participation we had from the community in the in the overall process. There were many meetings, long meetings, um, and there were just a lot of people who took the time to be involved, which was fantastic. Um, and I am really grateful personally for the opportunity to pour into this. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I would say that this is the the second strategic plan I've had an opportunity to be a part of. Um, it was it was very well done, and I think that having um, a facilitator who um, could work us through this was it was a game changer. So, Mark, uh, kudos and a nice job on the development of this. The other thing I would mention is the lack of a strategic plan is why I got involved in the school board in the first place. And um, when I started coming to board meetings, the strategic plan had been outdated by about three years on the website, and I looked it up, and I was trying to understand what are we holding people accountable to. And so um, this, there are so many components of, the, uh, of this plan that, that each of them have different metrics associated with success. And so um, you will, as the board works throughout the year and then subsequently through the five years, um, there are periods of time, right? We may not say, hold up, this is on the strategic plan, pay attention, we're not meeting goals here, we are meeting goals. Uh, but throughout the, the year, when we talk about different metrics, they all go back to the strategic plan. And so as a community member and as a part of the community, this is an important document to hold the board and the administration accountable to and ask questions about and look at. And so. I appreciate the fact that this there's a ease of use in this as well. Um, so thank you again. I think every this is the like I said they're five years. So um, and when I first got here there was there wasn't one. So I think that every year or every session this goes through uh, it gets better. So thank you. I appreciate the work. I just add that sometimes you know the way you, you need measurable things, but you also need ways to measure. When I came, we didn't have a consistent, um, for example, but benchmark testing like we do with FastBridge now. But that's, and, it's, and it helps if a district uses the same test <laughs> for a while, because then you can compare apples to apples. So, so, so not only measurable things, but you need ways to measure, and I think we've gotten better with that as well. And we can, we'll, we'll continue to. Is, is this the document that's going to be on the website? Or something? It will be so in... Sandy's going to streamline it for a... Similar to the last one, the 2015 okay. to 21. It has more, yeah, more mm -hmm. yeah. It'll be a brochure, you know, easier to read, kind of easy to follow, a diagram of sort. Um, and yes, thank you, Mark. And I think we have audience members who are participating in that as well. And um, it was, they were long days. And I've known Sarah Shriver for 20 years, and she is the foremost expert, not only in the state, but also was president of the national um, state and federal programs uh, uh, group. So. Uh, we were very lucky to, to have her on board. She's easy to, some people are just have an ease about them to just relay information and kind of work through it because we're all at different levels in our understanding of what's taking place. But what I like most as superintendent about this plan is, you know, some boards stick and, you know, have certain goals they put into their board policies. You know, we have to have, you know, 12% fund balance. And what do you do when that's, when you can't meet that? And when you have a, when you have a strategic plan, which gives us set goals to hold up to, you know, because we are going to have academic years that we might have a hiccup. Could go virtual for a year. 
we could have different options, right? I mean, I'm, I'm more, I, I'm, I become a realist now. I mean, there are I, nothing is above the table, right? Um, you know, and 10%, we, we chose 10% as a financial goal and 1.5% because we believe we can, we can do that on a consistent basis. Uh, it is manageable. It is also, we also know that at some point we may have something that we, we dip under 10% at the end of the year, but we'll build it back the next year. And, and those are important key metrics too. So it, instead of putting things in board policy and having stacks and stacks of policies, Having a guidance, uh, you know, guidance for the district to always refer back to as part of our daily goals and our board goals, then I think that's the best way to do it. And this is the first time I've actually seen a strategic plan that does both of those. So the evolution is is um, encouraging for myself and other superintendents. So thank you for Mark for helping to lead it and everyone who participated, board members and community members, teachers, staff. A lot of dinners eaten on breaks, for sure. <laughs> Okay, seeing no other comments, this is a roll call vote. Amy? Yes. D? Yes. Megan? Yes. Gina is excused. Griffin? Yes. Arlene? Yes. The chair votes yes and the motion carries. Thank you. We'll move on to personnel. I do have those. Mr. Schwager is at a negotiating conference. Um, this evening, we have several. Um, we have several different items from Howard's department. The first one is consideration to approve um, the BEA hire, and that is um, A, physical education instructor at senior high school, Eric Zakursky, former Bedford High School teacher, um, being rehired, and B, music choir uh, instructor at the junior and senior high school, Miss Tracy Glover. Do you want me to go through all of them? Or do you want me to stop and... They, uh, no, you can go. Okay, sorry. Um, the second item is consideration to accept BEA retirements. Um, letter A, English instructor at the senior high school, Miss Laura Taylor. B, sixth grade instructor at the junior high school, Miss Karen Sullivan. Uh, both were reti put their pa retirement papers in. And three would be consideration to accept BEA resignation. And we just have the one speech language pathologist at Jackman Road Elementary, Miss Cassandra Decker. Okay, thank you, Carl. Can I get a motion for the consideration to accept BEA new hires? Madam President. Megan. I move that the Board of Education accept BEA new hires A and B as listed below as recommended. Physical education instructor at the senior high, Eric Sikursky. Music choir instructor at the junior high, Tracy Glover. Thank you, Megan. Is there support? Support. support. Oh, wow. I think Arlene. Go with Arlene. <laughs> Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you. Moving on, can I get a motion for the consideration to accept BEA retirements? Madam President. Amy? I move that the Board of Education accept the BEA retirements A and B as recommended. English instructor at the senior high, Lara Taylor, and sixth grade instructor at the junior high, Karen Sullivan. Thanks, Amy. Is there support? Support. Thanks, Arlene. Any discussion on this topic? Seeing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you. And lastly, the consideration to accept BEA resignation. Can I get a motion? Madam President. Arlene. I move that the Board of Education accept the BEA resignation of Cassandra Decker, speech language pathologist at Jackman Road Elementary, as recommended. Thank you, Arlene. Is there support? Support. Thanks, Amy. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you. I'm moving on to policy items and the first reading. Uh, yes, uh, Madam President. Uh, this evening we have consideration to approve the first reading for volume 37, number one. This is from September 2022. A uh, reminder that we do use uh, a National Service NEOLA for our board policies. Uh, the process that we use is uh, anytime there is federal or state law that um, affects one of our policies, they give us an update, which is, uh, you know, which we have to approve. Uh, even if we can't uh, not approve it, we have to go through and, and take the action to approve it. Sometimes they have new policies that are available to us that we may select. Um, and as well, uh, sometimes there are just revised policies 
that there's additional options that we may select. Um, so we have just the, just the one volume for review. We did review a separate volume, but that had zero changes made by the, by the committee. So we have just the one for the, so that will not be changed, will not need to be considered or approved by the board. Um, but for the first reading, I just, I would ask that um, everyone take a look at it, make sure that uh, those on the committee understand uh, that we made the changes that we were identified. Board members who were not there, take a look at it. And the policies uh, that were reviewed this time were policy 6108, authorization to use electronic fund transfers and automated uh, clearinghouse arrangements. This is a really business department function. We've been doing this for years, so uh, we have shared it with Julie, and, and she's and she's going to work with uh, with um, the policy we have to make sure that it meets our needs. But we this is not new to the district. Not all districts have been using the electronic um, transfer, but Bedford's been doing it for some time. Uh, policy 74. Uh, 7440.03. Um, it was a revised legal code for a small unmanned aircraft system. So this is for a drone, drone type um, pieces. It prohibits the um, individuals from who are not within the district or saying, uh, authorized by the district from flying drones over the schools and uh, using and taking footage of the buildings. Now we do use drones within the district for multiple reasons. Some of the images this evening um, you know, we've had drone views of that. I, I know that we've shared other aspects of it, but those have been, you know, they, they come to the district, they ask for permission, and, you know, and we allow them to happen. But we don't want drone use when our kids are out there at recess and, and we have drones flying by. Uh, so that prohibits that piece. Uh, policy 3 was 8805. It was for um, new flags and displays. It just, it highlights the um, policy we currently have for the United States uh, flag, as well as the state of Michigan flag, and any district flags that we have, and for any flags that are, any flags or banners that are used in curriculum. Um, but it, but it, uh, anyone that wants to fly a different flag has to get permission from the, from the district for that. And teachers sometimes use uh, flags in different curriculum pieces, like world history teachers may have, you know, flags up, and those are fine, obviously. Um, and then the final one is policy 9150, it's revised, that's for school visitors. The state of Michigan changed language um, regarding um, visitors that may have one time been on the sex offender list. We wanted to ensure that we maintained the, the uh, authorization from the superintendent's office for anyone that requests to come in and visit maybe a family member or a student that would be on there. Um, it allows us to authorize that to happen if they have, you know, if they are guided by a school personnel piece. Uh, we do a background check on those, you know, so. It just strengthens our ability to know who's in our buildings at all times. So please, this is the first reading. We'll have a second reading um, at the next meeting, and then we can then we can approve those. But this was a small review compared to some of the other other pieces. The state legislature has been out for some time because it is coming up on election here in November. Um, so the next one may be a little larger, especially as uh, we get new legislators in the, both the, the federal and the U and the state level. Okay, thanks, Carl. Any comments or questions around those policies? Do we have to make a motion for this? We don't. The second reading we'll vote and discuss. Yep. Okay, seeing no other discussion, we'll move on to our second public commentary. Hi, Amy. Um, currently, I think the concession stands, I could be wrong, in the football stadiums are the bands correct or, or they collect the money from the concessions? Will that still be the same case? Do, did they build that facility that is there for the concession stand? Did they pay for that? Do we owe them money if we put a different concession stand in and use their concession stand as a bathroom? That's... Uh, one thing I'm wondering, uh, also I like the gray brick with the red letters, just saying, even if it's a small bit. <laughs> um, that's about it as far as this stuff goes. Let me double check. Oh, also, will the strategic plan be more informative on the website, or is it just a slideshow? Thank you, guys. Thanks, Amy. 
additional public commentary? Yeah. How's everyone doing? Um, I am here for an issue can with... You, uh, sorry, can you state your name? Oh, I'm sorry, my name is Brad Wagner. Okay, Brad, and, and you'll have to sign in with your name and address on the paper, too. Okay, that's fine. Um, the issue that I'm here for is that the JV and freshman volleyball, girls volleyball team have not been allowed to use the new basketball court or volleyball for any of their home games. Um, as to my understanding, that Coach Menor has kept that the way that she wanted it because she wants to have the main basketball court for her for practice. And they are, not, they are using the auxiliary gym, the new gym that we built, the three of them, spread out for the freshman volleyball games. We have 60, 70 people that come to these games. There's two little stands that hold 20 people at a time. My mom's standing for an hour and 15 minutes when the gym that my tax dollars are paying for that I just did is sitting wide open and empty with nobody in it when every other sport that we do, baseball, basketball, football, all get to use all the same amenities. They all go to the same high school, but yet our girls have to play in the auxiliary gym because Mrs. Menor does not want them using that. Says they, didn't, they haven't earned the right to play in there, which is complete, but it's preposterous. It's, it's absolutely crazy. It has been brought up to Mr. Garman, you know, why, why can we not so, use this? Sorry, Brad, just, I, just want, I should have went over this because we had new public okay. commentary. So in your public commentary, we um, do not call um, staff members, board members to task. So if you could refrain from specifically mentioning people's names. Private conversation with the okay. superintendent is different, but public commentary. Okay, well, it's, 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 an, it's, it's the whole point that I'm here is that my, my daughter plays on the freshman team, and there's 15 girls on each team, and they're being told that they're not allowed to play on our varsity court with a place where they go to school, where they do everything. My dollars pay for it. You charge me admission for the $5 to get in there. It is under my understanding that this, you know, the facilities is, is appointed and uses is by the board and by him to what's going on. I don't know where there's, there's nothing in any of the policies or anything that say that they cannot play in there and she can tell them that they cannot play in there. I mean, it's, 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 it's cut and dry to where our girls should be playing in there. My mom should not be standing for an hour and there's nothing going on in this gym. Not one of the home JV or freshman games conflict with any varsity games or anything going on in that gym. So we have a gym sitting there wide open doing nothing but we are stacking people in the auxiliary gym where the cheerleaders are, where there's practice going on for other things, and we're playing in the middle of that with no room, people standing around, and our gym is wide open. It's about, I don't want to sit here and go through what I found out on policy today, um, conflict of interest. It can't, it's, it's, it's telling our girls that, you know, what is that telling our girls there? All the, all the football players get to play on the field. My junior Lions get to play this Saturday on the field. Everything we do is all, all everybody gets to use the varsity fields, but our girls and the freshmen and the JV do not. I just don't understand it. I know it's out of, it's, people say it's out of our control. It's not out of our control because Mr. Garman and her can come to some understanding. I'm sorry, the, the sports athletic director and people can come to understanding that they should be playing on this court. That's about as far as I want to go. I've never done this. I've never came up and done this. But for my girl to sit there and say, you know, we're not worth, she's saying that we're not even allowed to go in there. We can't, we're not even worth it. So you go over there and you peek in the gym, nothing's going on. Why can't we use that? We have 100 people sitting here. That's about as far as I need to go with that. I don't know what else I need to do, but I thought this would be my chance to express it because everything that I have wrote, read for facilities, um, use of facilities, everything is done by the superintendent, not, mis not by the athletic director and the volleyball people. That's all I have. Thanks, Brad, appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I'll mention also, um, during public commentary, we don't respond to the comments, but okay. we, we will follow up with you. Please, do you need my email, anything, do you want me, I, it's like, that's, a, I just don't. Yeah, it if, should be if pretty, you sign it in, be we'll get. It should be pretty cut and dry. 
I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's one of these common sense things that I just, we don't even understand, and a lot of parents are afraid to talk about it, period. They're afraid to come here. They're afraid to open their voice. You know, I'm there for the 30 girls that aren't playing. There's playing on, on an auxiliary gym with a million people there. It's, re, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Thank you for Thank you. listening to me. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Any additional public commentary? Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Jeff Wente, uh, evening board members. Uh, I was sitting there as you were talking about the budget for the stadium, and it looks like there's probably going to be, you know, eighty to a hundred thousand dollar shortfall. Which obviously you have a plan in place to to cover the expense. But if you go to a lot of stadiums, uh, especially high school and collegiate, um, a lot of them have as you're walking up, they have. Uh, walk of fame or whatever you want to call it with dedicated brick pavers that people purchase uh, as a donation. Obviously, it's going to add to the expense of the construction because of increased concrete work and everything. But, uh, you know, just simple math, if you sold brick pavers at $250, um, you know, without adding any construction expense, which obviously is in there, you're only looking at like 320 people that would have to buy them. Um, you know, it's really not that great of an expense, especially when you're graduating the number of kids you are every year in a large district. I think that could be a viable way to make up the shortfall and possibly even uh, contribute to some of the additional funds or projects that you guys are looking at for the stadium, some of the add-ons like the, the split face that you guys are looking at. Um, but just a thought I had while I was sitting there. Uh, another thing. You know, we sit here and talk about these phenomenal facilities that we have and all the work we've done the last couple of years. And you look at uh, Florida right now, and all we can do is appreciate what we have. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Calling me before I forget what I want to say. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Carl. <laughs> Thank you. Before I lose my before I lose track. I'll go first in, in, board, in board comments uh, just so that uh, as an administrator so I can try to keep track of some of the things that were asked tonight. Um, the, so the, the question about the band and the concession stand is a good one. Uh, we do have a unique situation in Bedford where uh, about 20 years ago, I believe, the, the band booster program um, worked an agreement out with the district that they would cover the expense for building the concession stands. Um, they don't own the concession stands. They, well, we have an agreement that they get to um, first write a refusal to do the main events in the concession stands. Um, they're going to continue doing that in the new concession stand. I've, of course, you know, doing my due diligence, going through this process. We, uh, I met with the band booster president, explained what we were looking to do. Um, the contract itself is uh, quite a lengthy contract, uh, and. Um, it just states that we have to go over our, our ideals and provide them the concession stand. It doesn't say that we can't do it. Um, the good news is the band booster president and the booster group themselves, which one of our board members is not only a member but an officer in, in regards to concessions, um, they've been part of the process as we go through. So uh, I think it's going to help the band booster program because they're no longer going to have to staff two or three different concession stands. They can consolidate their forces, so to speak, onto one, into one and it actually, the way it's designed, it will be easier to move items in and out when you're, you know, when you're stocking those uh, concession stands. So uh, they've been a part of this the whole time. They will continue doing the same athletic events that, and the events that they currently do. Our uh, lacrosse team and our soccer teams are, are doing, they're going to continue doing their own concessions because they were doing so over at the um, Indian Creek facility. So not a lot's going to change other than we're going to consolidate from two and sometimes three when it's a busy game down to one larger one. And those windows at the front of the concessions were just about 10 feet wide, so they're a lot wider than they look. So we can get, you know, we could get any, we could get up to uh, three rows of um, guests at each one, depending on the staff, but minimally two for each, uh, for each of those large windows, and lots of lots of room to be behind it as well. So, Amy, did you want to add anything to that? You've, they're going to be part of the design for the interior. We're not purchasing new equipment for the inside, but we've taken uh, the architects have gone through and have taken an inventory of all the equipment we have, consolidating the best equipment into the new facility, 
and then the, um, Amy and her team with the, with the band boosters will help design it because they know a lot better than we do where you know where things should be placed. I mean, even the designers have said we we, we use you know industry standard, and sometimes it just doesn't work for the for that setting or that group. Or um, so they'll help they'll help us design the interior of the of the building itself. Well, so if I could reach down under here and put on my Amy the Band Booster concession chair hat and not my school board member hat for a minute, um, I would just say that, you know, so far this year, it's been a year of change with having to share with um, lacrosse. Well, not not lacrosse yet, but we've shared with men's soccer um, already this year, and we've always shared with the um, football parents because they handle concessions for all of the football games except varsity. Um and it's just gone really well, and um, we're forging a lot of new partnerships. Everybody's communicating really well together. We have, um, you know, we all have ideas for what should happen with the concession stand next year. And um, so, Carl, when you said, you know, that the band boosters are going to be involved in the decisions for the interior, not just the band boosters. We're, you know, we're talking to everybody Right. together um and it's just going really well so which i'm i'm thankful to hear so it's it's what the you know what we what we're doing right now is not uncommon you know typically there's one concession stand and there's and you know multiple groups has you know there's obviously some concern with who's buying which items but um there are ways to alleviate those concerns it, the use of a pos system can has have been has been employed in certain places where um, they know what's purchased. They know what stock they have. They know, you know, who's selling it because they can tell with the report out, um, just like a restaurant or, or a store, can, what time it was sold. So, and then they can attribute the proceeds or the, you know, the cost for replacement back. Um, I, I think there's a lot of avenues to even improve on, you know, what's already happening. So, we'll get better. We'll get. We'll continue to get better at it. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm. I am excited. The group has been on the same page with us along the way because we do have a unique situation. As a former, when I was teaching and I was a class sponsor, it used in many districts, class sponsors, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, they have to scramble to get people to, to do it. And you know what it's like to try it. Friday night, if, if you want, if you want to be at a football game, you know, or you want to watch the band, especially if you're a band parent, you want to be out there watching your your kid perform. You don't want to be stuck in a concession stand. So it's it's difficult to staff these locations. So having one larger one, I think, will be easier for everyone and I think the convenience of having it there with the plaza will will really make a difference uh, I know it can get really crowded over by the main stand uh, just that homecoming this week I mean there was I think 5,000 plus individuals there I mean it's it, it, it was, was busy nuts. it was not I had to pull a few strings to get a Diet Pepsi it was <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, as long as you're letting me talk about this stuff I'm gonna say one more thing sure. we accept help during halftime so that our band parents can go and see their kids perform so if you're watching the game and you don't care about the band pop into a concession stand, we will not turn you away. You don't have to know what you're doing. The stuff is already made, and all you have to do is hand it to the people at the window selling the door. But we will accept your help. Thank you. Uh, uh, Brad, thank you for coming this evening. I will, I will get back with you, and I will, I will dig into it and, and get back with you. Um, we have brick pavers currently. When they built the, the stadium originally 25 years ago, there are, I don't know, I, I, hundreds, Tom? Hundreds of brick pavers that are there. Um, in, different in different spots throughout the stadium. Uh, they can become a challenge in, this, in Michigan due to the weather. You know, if you have brick papers on your patio, you know what I'm talking about. They pop, they come down, they crack, then we replace them. Um, I, I, it's been used. It can be effective. I think that we have some, uh, you know, some alternatives that it might be a little easier to manage. Any, anyone who's purchased a, a brick or has donated in the past and has anything in the stadium, it will not be tossed out. We will relocate it. We will ensure, my wife said the same thing. I bought a brick and, you know, back in, back in the early 90s. I said, oh, you know, okay, well, your brick will be there. We just got to relocate, you know, we might relocate a few because there are bricks around the, he mentioned the bell moving. So the bell is going to be moving into a different location, but there's bricks around the bell. We will, we will make sure, at least it looks like she has a brick around the bell. No, um, I, I can place every brick around that bell so yeah. okay well we will make sure that you know those things are still there but um but yeah we we have to we'll be creative and and you know we're always we're always looking for some ideas so thank you for bringing that up jeff um other than that i uh, we have a legislative luncheon or breakfast tomorrow we are hosting here the isd had reached out and asked if we would be we would consider to um, host it in our new facility 
Uh, we're glad to do so. So um, that's exciting for any superintendent and board members are welcome. I know that Amy will be joining us as our legislative liaison. Um, and I met with Mr. Um, Tim Wahlberg today, Congressman Wahlberg, and, and uh, he came in and Mark and I met with him and, and had a really good conversation, I think, very productive, down to earth. It's a several, you know, I've met with him several times now and, and you know, he, he, he knows Bedford and he's asked us questions. So I got to ask, I asked him for some help with some state issues that we're having now and to reach out to the Speaker of the House for us and, and he said he would do that. So um, we'll continue to advocate on behalf of the district every single chance we get. I think I'm good. Okay, thank you, Carl. We'll go ahead and move on to the other administrators at the table, Julie. Thank you, Madam President. Um, first of all, I just want to touch base on the strategic plan um, and the business office um, participation in that finance page on page 10. Um, the activities that we talk about, the annual meetings to review and, adult and adjust the budgets, those actually, I put out an open schedule and let people sign up and those meetings start next week. So um, that goal will be met or that activity will be met. Presentation of the annual audit, um, that's going to happen at one of the November board meetings. Uh, our auditor was already booked for the end of October meeting, but um, he's looking at his schedule right now for those two November meetings, and he'll come present at one of those. Um, also, the audit will be posted on the website, um, number three, as soon as the board um, approves the acceptance of that audit and the community update on the fund balance. It's all part of, it'll be part of the presentation, but it's also part of that financial statement that gets posted on the website. Um, as I mentioned, the audit auditor will be coming in November to do the presentation to the board. I am expecting sometime next week to get our first preliminary draft and start working on the management discussion and analysis piece. So. Uh, we're really close to getting that wrapped up. Uh, also, I um, heard from Shelly Ferris, our food service director, and she's going to put out a monthly newsletter where she does some, uh, just talks about activities going on in food service and maybe some staff recognition. So um, you'll see that newsletter, her first one for September, will be in my um, weekly report for this week. Is that just for staff, or is that for community as well? Um, it's it's open. She's I, I don't know what her means of uh, relaying that newsletter are going to be, but um, it it could be for anyone. Okay, we'll work on it. Okay. Um, and lastly, the I just want to touch base on the softball facility upgrade um, project, and so far we've actually received cash in hand of over $58,000 with more coming in and I'm just working on um, getting an in-kind schedule of donations from the parent volunteer who's sort of overseeing that project so that we can value that in our capital asset schedule and um, insure it appropriately at the right values. So that's all I've got. Okay, thanks Julie. You're welcome. Go over. Mark? Thanks. Uh, I've touched on it briefly with uh, the board before, but we, we did receive um, back in the spring what's called a first 10 grant. Um, it actually helps districts um, address the first 10 years of life, but especially the early childhood to kindergarten transition. Um, so uh, we've been working on that um, in various meetings since then, and we're ready to the engine's really rubbing now to, to really get started with the work. Uh, so, so some of the things we're working on um, very soon, the early childhood and um, young fives and kindergarten teachers will be interfacing with some, with some collaborative teaming uh, around curriculum. Uh, we're also reaching out. There's, there's actually 16 um, different child care centers in our in our municipality, so so this program helps us reach out to all of those, and um, all the municipalities in the county um, have 
signed on to do what's called the Essentials Texting Program. So, so actually, um, parents that have young children, they would receive a regular text, and, and it talks about essentials to help, student, to help their children get ready for kindergarten. So, so it gives them the research base behind it in language that's, that's easy to understand, and then gives them some strategies to actually do those essentials. So, so it's, whole, it's all about getting them ready for their first experiences with school. And uh, our uh, national representative that we work with, Louisa, is going to be coming to the district for a visit to our programs on October 26th. So we're getting ready for that visit. And uh, so, just, and the, the big piece of good news was they had a really unreasonable date for which all the grant funds had to be expended. And our state person, uh, Joy, who oversees the grant, managed to get that extended to September 30th. Of 23, which is like a normal grant year <laughs> works. So we're very happy about that. We could never have expended it all at the date when they first had it set. So uh, the other thing I wanted to update on was um, the board and and uh, folks that have commented to the board before um, expressed some concerns about the attendance policy. So the principals and I completed the first layer of that work yesterday, um, which. I think the best thing about it is it will result in one attendance policy in the handbook, not three levels. So one attendance policy with consistent language. There are some nuances. For example, the high school, it's attendance is a credit bearing, um, has a credit bearing component. So there's some nuances uh, that are unique to some of the levels. But in general, the vast majority will be one attendance policy, and that will help them uh, you know, practice it more consistently too. So, but I'm I'm planning to get that revision to the board for the October cow and November meet. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Tom. Yes, uh, softball project is going strong with current uh, CTE students working on forming up concrete walkways and footings and pretty much everything that we can throw at them. They've been helping out with. Um, donors, like Julie said, are just coming out of the woodwork and it seems like we get a new one every day, which is awesome. Um, um, recently purchased some additional bottle filling stations for the schools. Um, during COVID, we turned off all the drinking fountains. Um, then we turned them back on this, this beginning of the school year and they don't seem to be getting used as much as the bottle, bottle filling stations do. So we're going to add two bottle filling stations to each of the elementary so that we'll have three at each of the elementaries and two more to the junior high and the high school. Um, they have significantly dropped in price since six months ago when I purchased one, almost 40 percent. So, yeah, good deal there. Um, I attended a conference. I attended a conference, uh, MSBO Con, Michigan School Business Officials Conference, which was attended by all of the fac facilities and operations managers throughout the state of Michigan. Um, some of the classes I took were turf management, which it was great because we just got turf. <laughs> turf management, HVAC controls, and trends in custodial staffing and raising morale. Um, everybody's in the same boat that we are. Everybody's looking for workers, and the workers we have are just not what they were before, before COVID. Um, speaking of that, we currently have two open positions, one at the senior high school and one at uh, Monroe Road Elementary. Uh, I just made an offer to a young lady today for the senior high school and she accepted so she needs to go through the, the vetting process and get her on board as soon as possible then we'll be fully staffed at the high school um, but still have one at Monroe Road. Uh, that's all I have. Okay thanks Tom. We'll go ahead and start with Arlene. I just want to mention that um, as you can see with the issues that were addressed at this meeting just this meeting tonight uh, as we have in the pa past meetings, that uh, it's an indication that we're not satisfied with status quo. We continue to look forward and into the future and make plans for successfully getting there. Uh, you can't just keep going without a roadmap. And uh, our strategic plan should certainly provides that roadmap. And uh, not only goals, but activities also on how do you get there. It's nice to have a goal, but it's also good to know how. And, you know, and it's been done collaboratively, which is wonderful. Uh, so I'm real pleased. I, I think the um, community um, 
hopefully feels that we are thinking out of just today, but down the road also to maintain the quality that Bedford is known for. Thank you, Arlene. Amy? Uh, I don't have a lot more to say. I yield most of my time to Amy, the concession chair. Um, <laughs> we will see um, all of you at Trunk or, Trunk or Treat on the 25th at the high school. Okay, thanks, Amy. Megan? Um, I, as a parent, I have been missing the where's the bus. Um, and so I had asked Carl to just give a, just a brief update. And he did update me personally, but I thought the community might like to hear kind of where we are with that. Well, it wasn't much of an update, unfortunately. Uh, we, uh, as everyone knows who used to use Where's the Bus, uh, we, we did, um, we had to switch the Where's the Bus company. Our previous company is no longer going to uh, update their software um, for transportation for schools. So we, we went with a whole new company that has to remap the entire district. You know, my tech-savvy self thought they could just download Google Maps and then give it a go, but um, I'm wrong, I guess. So um, they, they are in the process of doing that. They're, they're really rewriting the entire mapping system for routes based on state law and how many buses, you know, bus stops you can have per, you know, so many feet. Uh, so they don't yet have a, an update in time, but... They initially told us it was going to be, you know, early mid or probably mid fall. So I kind of guessed it would be, you know, late October, early November. We don't know. I, I do have Carrie talked to them twice today and trying to pin them down, and they're they're elusive in the, in that because they're you know they're, they just keep saying the work is ongoing. Um, I believe it's still going to be sometime in November, late November probably. Um, I think parents have been patient, and we have received some calls, but. Uh, you know, and they try to do some mitigating items to help with that. But uh, now I know it's a it's a nice feature to have, and the system that they that we do um, roll out will be far superior to the system that we had. It will also be a closed system that the old system anyone could look at could go on and create an account and find our buses. The new system, in order to find your bus, you have to have a student on that bus. So it's a whole other level of security with that. So I'm, I am excited about that. Um, many, many districts have the same system. Just a little anxious to get it rolling. I will I'll give updates as soon as they come to our community and, and the board. Thank you so much. That's all I have. Okay. Thanks, Megan. Griffin? I would just first like to say thanks, everyone, for coming. I know there's crickets in the room, but... Uh, I still hear... We smashed one. It's, it's offspring are still in here. Yeah, but no, seriously, um, thanks everyone for coming. Usually, I've said it before, for yeah. many years we just sit here and talk to ourselves. So it's nice, um, and everyone's welcome to come here and, and speak. And yeah. we don't respond um, just to keep the, the order, but um, we get back with you. Um, I'm at Jackman Road every morning, and I've been noticing a lot of law enforcement out there. The state police and the sheriff are out there today uh, nailing people. Um, you can't, we just we have to do whatever we have to do to keep the kids safe who are out there walking and crossing the road. Um, like I said, I've seen the crossing guard literally jump out of the way on several occasions. People just aren't paying attention. People don't care. Um, and it's going to continue. The, the law enforcement presence is going to continue. I've seen Deputy Krupp standing out there acting as crossing guard, and I've literally seen him here hold the stop sign, and he'll get in his car and run somebody down. So that's what we we need people to know, that you can't, you can't speed through school zones. You can't pass buses because... I mean, even we have those cameras, and they're catching people every day. So eventually, hopefully, uh, people get the idea that you can't do that. And it's the same cars every morning if you talk to the bus drivers. They know who it is. Um, I have been told 10 to 12 a day. We had seven violations um, written, I believe, so far this week that I know of. It, it goes directly to the um, Monroe County deputies, and, and they follow the process. Yeah, 
So other than that, for me personally, I know I wasn't at the meeting uh, last month, but it's been a smooth start for for my family. It was a little bit more challenging because now we have five kids to get ready oh my God. and five lunches to pack. Jesus. We only have one. I know when I started on the board, I had Separate. like four or five kids at home still. Now I only have one during the day. So he plays by himself. So that's all I have. All right, thanks, Griffin. D. <clears throat> I would like also the same sentiments that Arlene said about the strategic plan. I used to sit in meetings when Lisa brought it up years ago before I was sat on the board. You've got it, and it's wonderful. And I'm glad that everybody was involved. It's, it's wonderful. Let's stick to it now. I want to thank the public for coming. And I want you to tell people, please come. Don't ever be afraid to say anything. This is how we know. Right. We don't know these things unless the public comes. And like Griffin said, usually all you hear are the crickets. So <laughs> one less tonight. Thank God. I think that's it. I want to thank everybody. Everybody have a good night. I want to thank the band for giving up one of their, um, you know, they had two concession stands. Well, that saves us a lot because now we can have two rest, the, the team room and the restroom. And they built those. So I want to thank them. And since you, I see you in your baseball cap at the game. So I got popcorn last week. That was about it. Well, it was so busy. It was great. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Okay, thanks, Dee. Uh, a couple of items I'll just follow up with. Uh, I'll mention this at the beginning of the next meeting as well. So we have two board, we have two meetings a month. We have a committee of the whole, which happens the last Thursday, and then the regular board meeting, which is the first Thursday. Uh, we made a commitment a couple years ago. I actually think more than a couple. Car when Carl first came on board, to have our committee of the whole meetings be more um, conversational in terms of with, with the public, still representing parliamentary procedure because that's how we maintain order, um, but being able to ask questions and get answers back during the Cal meeting and getting uh, input from the community on things. At the Cal meeting, we, we are spending a lot more time in detail on these items that you see us kind of just roll through very easily um, we've spent time at the last meeting and then certainly had the information to prepare ourselves. So with the board, the first of the month board meetings, um, it, it is more formal and, and I'll look to start having it be a little bit more formal in terms of our conversations with the audience and that we will. Um, uh, one of the things we also put in place is that Carl does during his uh, portion of the meeting has the opportunity, if it's not personal in nature and things like that, he has the opportunity um, and the freedom to give his update and answer the questions within there. Board members do not have that opportunity to answer community questions when they're sitting at the table. So um, just wanted to, again, level set, I probably showed up for our new people, so thank you. Okay. Bearing with me for um, saying something First during time your time. Too, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, just a, a couple other um, less, um, less, formal things. The, um, the early intervention, I, I've had two parents that have specifically talked to me and one of the things that they haven't in, enjoyed about the program are the updates that they receive during the day and those include pictures as well of their students um, doing different activities and I've had two this month reach out to me and so um, kudos to having that as a part of of what, um, what we're sharing with the parents. They even showed me a picture on their phone that said, oh my gosh, look, he has friends, he's sitting with people. And so um, they were very excited about that. So probably less excited if they were at the high school getting pictures of their students, but that's a, a, a value that two people just recently have mentioned. So thank you for that. The other, a uh, couple of other things, the brick paver. So, as I'm on the, I'll, I'll take out my alumni association hat and put that on. Um, yeah, 
class of 88. We, um, so the Alumni Association, we have always traditionally used brick pavers to fund the Hall of Fame event that we do every um, couple of years. Well, it was every other year and then COVID, and so now it's looking like a five-year trail. Mm -hmm. So um, so we use that to fund the Hall of Fame, um, any of the plaques, and then the dinners that we put on for families and things like that. So um, that's how we've always traditionally used those brick pavers. I think it's a, a great idea. The other thing is I don't... Im I don't envision us not having brick pavers for that kind of same Hall of Fame, um, but it would be uh, along the Bell area, that section where the pavers are now. And I would tell you the other big thing with the pavers, as I personally receive those, take those, put them in, source the bricks, um, it's harder and harder. To, that's an art form that is harder and harder to find. We've had a uh, um, a Leo who is over on Concierge, who does the uh, gravestone markers, they have done it for us the, uh, forever. And when I said, hey, I want to upgrade, I want to get some big ones, and we want to make sure it matches, it took us about five months to just source 12 of those pavers. And if, you, if they crack, because that's the thing you run against, too, with our weather, is when they're putting the pavers, when they're actually engraving them, if they crack, because, you know, headstones and stuff are really thick. We're talking pavers that are this thick. Sometimes they crack. It's a lot of work. And for, we were, I think it was 350 or 400 um, out the door for the work plus the paver. If it doesn't break, you're, you know, we're only netting about $75. So it's just, again, everything is very cost prohibitive these days. So I think it's a good, I, I like it. People are interested in it because they like to leave their mark. Um, some people on their stadium or their, their school district. So I don't think the door's closed yet, although we haven't had that discussion with the superintendent. So the other, um, the other thing for the Alumni Association, I did want to just share, um, and we'll do a more formal, I'll share a more formal with numbers, but uh, because we're here at this place where we saw all these wonderful things, the Alumni Association um, is, is donating from the various fundraisers we've had over probably 10 years, 12 years, to the stadium, about $80,000. And that, that came one, uh, you know, seat, reserve seat at the football stadium, that was about 10,000, it's probably closer to $12,000. That uh, parents who purchased reserve seats for the home games, over the years that we've done that, it's been about ten dollars to $12,000. We'll probably continue that as just upgrades, putting it in the fund. Um, it's every time someone went to a trade fair and there was a donation bin for the Alumni Association, all went to the stadium funds. Uh, money that we received as a part of the Barron um, deal, the Barron insurance on the uh, press box, that went to pay off the stadium debt and a portion of it went into the res restroom fund. Um, the last three years of the Grogan's deal, all that money was being funded, funneled into the restroom fund. So it's about $82,000 that the Alumni Association, so we'll get a more formal announcement, but for anyone who's ever done any of that work, I mean, that's a pretty significant amount of money that um, we had hoped would always go to funding a restroom, and now we've got a great run of as well. Yeah, so I was going to mention Mule Muscle, and I was trying to get a number, but their, Mule Muscle is a... Um, another volunteer organization that supports different um, aspects of the district uh, athletics. And so they also, they did just be the day before the world shut down on March 17th of 2020, they did a fundraiser over at Forest View for, um, for the stadium. So uh, there's that. I, I won't announce that. I'll, I'll let Michelle and Rebecca have that. Uh, but just wanted to say my thanks as an alumni myself that um, it's a lot of work to raise money one dollar at a time, <laughs> not five hundred thousand dollars at a time like some people do. So, uh, but anyways, my grace and my thank you. <laughs> I, I appreciate the uh, all the alumni who are a part of that. So, okay. With that being said, let's go back to our agenda. Apparently, I forgot how to run meetings. Okay, can I get a motion to adjourn? motion to adjourn thanks Amy can I get support thanks D any discussion oh. all those in favor aye. aye aye opposed and the motion carries thank you appreciate everyone coming tonight